What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another cryptocurrency update. Hope everybody's doing well today. Great to see Bitcoin almost $47,500. We can see the market cap is back over $2 trillion. So what a weekly close. Great to see that pump last minute yesterday, Sunday night. We can see the entire market is in fact green besides USDC, the stable coin. In the past week for Bitcoin has been nothing but strong. It's great to see on the weekly time frame because Bitcoin, even from last week up until today, is up about 17% hopefully turning these previous levels below into support. Even Algo or Algorand from its recent low has pumped roughly 44% from 67 cents all the way up as high as 97 cents. And depending which low you use for XRP, we've still had a nice strong recovery all the way from 62 cents to as high as 90 cents sitting at about almost 88 cents today, 87.9. First things first, shared by Ripple, want to emphasize this. By leveraging RippleNet Solutions, Asimo, a Ripple partner, has shortened their payment settlement time down from approximately 24 hours to an average of 22 seconds. But Kevin, I thought the XRP ledger processes transactions in 3 to 5 seconds with finality. It does. But keep in mind there are real humans on the other side sometimes clicking and managing some of this. So whether it's 22 seconds or even 2 minutes, that's much better than 24 hours. And that's just one of the many benefits of the XRP ledger and XRP as the bridge currency between a variety of fiat currencies and future central bank digital currencies. If you guys have time, go watch what X underscore Anderson posted. This was a last year video that he compiled of David Schwartz, Bob Way, all kinds of information and kind of making some predictions with how they will use XRP or how they will utilize ODL and even some basic predictions discussing the current Ripple lawsuit. Check this out, beyond fascinating. Anders L is one of the smartest people in this entire space, so definitely watch this video. Next up, we have Rio de Janeiro of Brazil, one of the BRICS nations to allow real estate tax payments with cryptocurrency as of 2023. This is the future. More countries are going to follow, and eventually, we're gonna have the option to really pay any types of taxes via crypto. Next up, by Cointelegraph, we have Coinbase reportedly purchasing or acquiring this $2.2 billion Brazilian unicorn behind Mercado Bitcoin. Remember, Ripple the company in 2020 was already in discussion with the Central Bank of Brazil. Think of many massive partners like DLocal as well, another billion dollar company that is a RippleNet user. They also did a massive IPO. And now we're seeing Coinbase continuing their acquisition spree across the globe with a bigger emphasis on Latin America in their most recent institutional report. Wanted to share this again from Jack the Rippler. Boom. Ripple identified as an opportunity in payments alongside Circle and Goldman Sachs. Now, I know this was shared a while back, but just want to emphasize this document right here. We have Circle with integrations to Algo or Algorand, Hedera with HBAR, and of course, Stellar with XLM. Of course, you could even include Solana, AVAX, a variety of other assets. Right in the center, we have RippleNet and the XRP Ledger. And then on the right-hand side, we have Coinbase and, of course, USDC. And USDC could, of course, be tied to Circle and Center, the centralized firms that really own and control USDC. What's interesting about this? Well, this entire report was made by Goldman Sachs. And Reth Kahneman shares it as well, discussing this overview of digital assets and blockchain. Now, Goldman Sachs acknowledges Ripple as an opportunity in payments. But what they do want to emphasize is it's RippleNet, the network of banks that are working with Ripple, not specifically on-demand liquidity or XRP something to consider and right below this tweet he has the original link available and this was really just a couple months ago quick update with terra luna they now hold more than one billion dollars in bitcoin and speaking of goldman sachs i found this funny so we have king solomon sharing hypothetically speaking if i were the guy that designed both the goldman sachs and ripple xrp website in tandem i'd certainly want payment for my services in xrp as you can see the similarities between their websites so right here is goldman sachs Digitalization, you have this whole DLT model in the background from cryptocurrencies to the metaverse. Explore the mega trends that are reshaping economies. Now we go to Ripples and can see a lot of similarities. Of course, this website has been the same for quite some time. XRP offers financial institutions the fastest, most reliable option for sourcing liquidity on demand. And quick reminder for anybody that holds API 3 and why I'm personally very comfortable with this asset shared by Ryan Boder, we can see. They are, in fact, GDPR compliant. So Airnode, of course, the solution of API 3 for decentralizing these APIs, so to speak. So Web 3, API 3, so API solutions for Web 3.0. That's something I feel is extremely important for global adoption. So API 3 has some of the highest level of compliance backed by digital currency group Pantera, Emergo, some of the biggest organizations in crypto today. 
I also want to read this tweet verbatim from HBAR to the moon because it's just perfectly said. Hedera's main goal is to build a network ready for worldwide adoption and operate within regulatory compliant frameworks so large enterprises, remember, one of the first enterprise DAOs, financial institutions, and even governments can see the true potential of distributed ledger tech. When the hype goes away, only Hedera will survive. Now, of course, when the hype goes away, I believe that any utility sound asset that is building real solutions for real customers will survive with regulatory clarity. Also, Moon Lambo, next time somebody tells you XRP is centralized, share this map and ask them where the central point of failure is. There are over 1,000 nodes at the time of this post. Surely, one must rule them all. This is significantly more decentralized than Bitcoin and, of course, SWIFT. Now, keep in mind SWIFT, a consortium of banks, but really a huge chunk, let's just say 80%, goes through three of the biggest banks. That's centralized. Even if it's 15 global banks controlling this correspondent banking network, that's centralized. When you're distributing it to hundreds, if not even thousands of banks across the globe to level the playing field for equal opportunity, that is much more distributed and what I'd consider significantly more decentralized than today's solution that was built before the internet. We are using payment rails or highways to send payments that were built before the internet. I think it makes sense that we update them. Next up, we have this bank out of Israel. I'm going to say Bank Leumi is offering the service in partnership with New York-based custody and trading platform Paxos and will be the first bank in Israel to offer crypto trading services to its clients. One by one, we're seeing new countries every other week offering crypto services. And not only countries and banks, but some of the biggest custodians. When that news came out just recently, a couple weeks or a couple months ago, of BlackRock, the owners of the world that own Vanguard, the biggest institutions in custody, trillions of dollars, said they're opening a crypto trading desk is all the validation I need to understand that the crypto asset class at $2 trillion today is going to climb over this next decade. And even Crypto Eddie touching on this. So the Israeli bank, Leumi, is trading Bitcoin. Look under the hood and do your own research. Leumi signed formal partnership with, ooh, we talked about these two last video, the Canadian Imperial Bank and Australia's largest bank, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, the Australian National Bank or National Bank of Australia. They both joined RippleNet, by the way. And as she says, are using Ripple's blockchain technology to open kimono and share. Look at this. So emphasizing this article, the Canadian Imperial Bank and, am I right, the National Bank of Australia, NAB. Look at this, joined RippleNet to tap into the increasingly popular blockchain solution for cross-border payments and settlement. We touched on this about three days ago in my last video, but man, isn't this beautiful to see. So RippleNet's working with them, announcements come out, and then the bank basically announces that they are offering crypto trading services. XRP. Next up for LG Electronics, they've officially updated their business development goals to include cryptocurrency and blockchain-based software. Whether there's going to be custody solutions for wallets, whether there's going to be interoperability between these web and mobile applications. Crypto's here to stay. We are in the building phase. Next up, Irath Economy and the Central Bank of Egypt launched the National Instant Payment Network and InstaPay application, allowing fund movement instantly 24-7. So this is domestic, meaning only in Egypt. And of course, I'd imagine that they're going to be expanding for real-time payments for cross-border international users. But we can see between major banks, including, I believe, the National Bank of Egypt, which is a Ripple user. Remember, we went on that uh, Egyptian bank website and it showed Ripple like all over their homepage as well with RippleNet. So Central Bank of Egypt launched this application and real-time payments are slowly being adopted. We can send emails, text messages, and even phone calls within a matter of seconds to transmit information. We need these same type of rails to transfer value instantaneously. And remember, crypto can help with the settlements end on the back end, the invisible side that we don't even see. Next up, guys, we are on liquidmarketplace.io. As we can see, the drop coming down, boom tokenized ownership this is co-ownership in which high value collectibles can be fractionalized i'm so excited for the launch of this platform and everybody that is in the discord now is considered a vip so i did just retweet this by liquid marketplace on twitter follow them at liquid market pl make sure to join our discord server before we disable invitation links on march 29th so they're actually disabling their invitation link to get into discord so there's a limited time for access to become a vip so you can just click here and of course you can join the discord right there there's going to be all kinds of high value collectibles whether they're actual digital art and nfts or real high value collectibles of course i know we named some of it on a recent discord you'll be a vip and have access to some of the first drops on liquid marketplace next up by xrp darren check this out by vcexperts.com we can see prime unicorn index ripple labs investors 
this is what I want to emphasize too: China growth capital and China rock capital management. We've done videos on them. I've seen digital asset investor do content on it. It is a massive, massive organization. Highly recommend checking it out. And there's Tetragon. Remember, they tried to sue Ripple, take advantage of the situation with the SEC, and that didn't really work. Oh yeah, and Accenture involved with the Digital Dollar Project, some of the biggest companies in terms of digital transformation in the world related to DLT. And I talked to a lot of Accenture executives and I've seen many slide decks of Ripple regularly mentioned. And also, quick reminder to better understand the rates of inflation. I know we talked about the 72 rule in the past and even applying the 72 rule and understanding how much purchasing power you are losing on an annual basis. That's enough for me to get most of my dormant capital out of the bank accounts and into any type of asset that can see better growth and outpace the rate of inflation. We can see from 2012, the average home price was 274,000. 2022, nearly doubling 511,000. Also wanted to talk about this because this was a real picture that was shared by Elon Musk one year ago. And notice at the very top, XRP is at the top of this list. Is it a coincidence or is it not? And he posted and said, one coin to rule them all. Now, I've never seen Elon Musk's commentary specifically on XRP, the digital asset. I've seen tons of people ask him and spam him with questions. I've never seen his response personally. I do know, remember, Elon Musk knows payments. There's some guys that say, oh, Elon doesn't know what he's talking about. Yes, he does. He co-founded PayPal with Peter Thiel, who was one of the largest original investors in Facebook, both multi-billionaires. So he's familiar with payments. He's familiar with this digital landscape, and he understands Web3 perfectly. And I'd assume he understands Twitter as well with nearly 80 million followers. So I do like to entertain the thought that he was talking about XRP. Of course, the Bitcoin ring is right there, but you've seen him publicly bash Bitcoin on multiple occasions. So I like to pretend he is talking about XRP, and maybe he is. And last but not least, guys, we're going to cover iTrust Capital. After you fund your account, you also get $100 in Bitcoin. This is tax-free trading. So I've had a Roth IRA with this company for almost two years now. I used to be with Vanguard, the typical you know index funds. I had a 401k with my employer, liquidated all of that, went to iTrust Capital, have never been happier. You have dozens of crypto assets, as we can see how it works. The offerings will go to crypto assets and precious metals. And you can actually invest for the first time in history into cryptocurrency with an individual retirement account, a 401k, and there's even a few other types of accounts for business owners. So ranging from most of the ISO tokens, we have gaming tokens like Engine, you have Algorand and other layer one protocols, you have Atom for interoperability, you have payments with XLM, you have Polkadot, Link as an Oracle, Bitcoin, Ether, AVAX, even Compound and some other DEXs, Uniswap, Curve, some lending platforms like Yearn and Aave. So super interesting. I highly recommend you check this out. You can see some of their fees. There are no monthly fees. There is no monthly setup fee. All there is is just like Coinbase. When you trade, there's a 1% transaction fee. This is a no-brainer because everything I'm growing is tax-free. 50K into 500K, you pay 0% in taxes. They're also involved with Fireblocks, so potentially staking coming in the future and all kinds of types of DeFi protocols. We also know Coinbase Custody. So one of my rule of thumbs is, let's go to Coinbase Custody right here. If I go to Coinbase Custody and I look at the list of assets, so this is coinbase.com slash custody. Let's go to assets. I'm always looking at assets that are approved here because most likely they're going to be good to go to be listed on iTrust Capital. We can scroll through. I'm still waiting to see HBAR. I'm still waiting to see VeChain, but I do believe they're coming. I can see API 3. I can see Origin Trail. And if you don't want to manually search, of course, you can even type right here. So Q&T, we're good to go. What about HBAR? Not quite yet. What about VeChain? Not yet. So we're getting there, guys. But great to see that. But all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned anything at all, be sure to like and subscribe. As always, all links are in the YouTube video description, and I'll catch you in the next one.